千里之行，始于足下。A journey of a thousand miles begins beneath the feet. We now gather in the Tao to travel the journey together. Welcome to Tao Talks with Derek Lin, where we take a deep dive into the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. I would like to invite you to center your thoughts and direct your attention to this moment in time, to the here and now, to be fully present and mindfully aware. As we all ready ourselves for this sacred process of the Tao, the chapter title for sixty-six is "Rivers and Oceans." This is taken from the first two characters of this chapter, whereas the previous chapter, sixty-five, the chapter title. Is taken from the last two characters. So these characters, Jiang Hai, are the together are the name for this chapter. The first character there, Jiang, it just means rivers. Hai, the second character, the character in the middle, that means oceans, rivers and oceans. There is a very specific meaning about rivers and oceans that we're going to get into at the very beginning of chapter sixty-six. So let's take a look at the chapter itself. Tao Te Ching, chapter sixty-six. Rivers and oceans can be the kings of a hundred valleys because of their goodness. In staying low, so they can be the kings of a hundred valleys. Thus, if sages wish to be over people, they must speak humbly to them. If they wish to be in front of people, they must place themselves behind them. Thus, the sages are positioned above, but the people do not feel burdened. They are positioned in front, but the people do not feel harmed. Thus, the world is glad to push them forward without resentment, because they do not contend. So the world cannot contend with them. So there is a bunch of ideas that we can see just by reading the chapter, starting out with the rivers and oceans. Per the title of this chapter, we have a fascinating concept called the Kings of a Hundred Valleys. That's in line three. Then we have the disposition of the sages, how the sages lead, and one can say that the sages lead by not leading in a conventional way. They don't want to put themselves over people in a way that would become a burden to the people. They don't want to put themselves ahead of people in a way that would bring harm to them, like leading them in a wrong direction. But because of that, they understand the Tao of leadership. They do not contend. Their non-contention is because of the fact that they themselves are non-contentious. They don't try to pick a fight, so the world does not pick a fight with them. They don't go looking for trouble, so trouble doesn't come looking for them. Now let's take a look at how we can break this character, these characters down, to see the hidden structure of Chapter 66. So starting from line one, we see. The characters for Bai Gu Wang, kings of a hundred valleys, and we see the same characters again at the end of line three. So I've highlighted them to make them easier to see. I've also highlighted the corresponding English translation so you can see exactly where they're at in the English part. 
So this first part is all about this concept, the kings of a hundred valleys. And it spans from line one, two to three. After that, it's changing to talk about what the sages are, what the sages, how the sages are and how they behave when they wish to, when they wish to lead. For that reason, we can easily assign the first three lines to the first section of this chapter. And that first section has a, you know, subtitle, which is Bai Gu Wang, the Kings of a Hundred Valleys. Let's continue. Let's take a look at line four and let's scan ahead. Now here's what we can see. Oftentimes in the Tao Te Ching, we see a poetic structure that is like A, B, A, B. That is alternating matches. So then, you know, the first line matches the third line, the second line matches the fourth line, etc. That's the kind of pattern that we see here. We start out with a couple of matching characters in line four. There's a character for wish, and it's the same character for want or desire. And then the last character is people. So those two characters are repeated in line six as the first and last character respectively. And they're translated the same way as you can see, wish and then people. So of course, they, they have a character in between. The two characters have a character in between that don't match from four and six. And that's because one of them is over people. The other one is in front of people. So they're not the same. Then in line five and line seven, we have a couple of characters that do match. They both begin, those two characters begin with line five and line seven, and they're exactly the same. They both mean must. So by the way, from a translation perspective, where is they, the English word? Well, in the Chinese, there's no specific character for they. It is implied due to the brevity and conciseness of ancient Chinese. It is understood that there is a they, but it is not spoken. It is not uh, expressly listed there. In English though, lacking that sort of convention, we have to fill in a word to make it a readable sentence in English. So it doesn't sound really odd. So together, these four lines are definitely together one section. And this will be the section two for us. So this section is about how the sages uh, want to be, when they want to be over or in front of people, they have to behave in a very specific way, in a very humble way. Then let's take a look at the next four lines. So from line eight onward, we definitely can see some repeating characters as well. And once again, we see that this is ABAB -B in terms of structure. That is in line eight and line 10, we do have a character in common and they're translated the same way, positioned. And the, the characters following that is different. And that's because one of them, line eight, is positioned above. The other one, line 10, is positioned in front. Then line nine and line 11, we definitely have repeating characters, three repeating characters for those two lines. And they're translated as, but the people do not. And then the last character there is translated for line nine, feel burdened. And then for line 11, feel harmed, as you can see. So legitimately, these four lines form a complete section there. Then what is the last section? Well, 
It's the conclusion. It's about how the world is glad to push the sages into a leadership position. They're quite happy in doing so. They're not resentful of that at all because it is not a burden, it is not, it is not going to bring a harmful result. And this is all because the sages themselves are not contentious. So no one contends with them. Let me also bring up one thing that's not expressly uh, pointed out here. You have four repeating characters at the beginning of line four, and they are repeated at the beginning of line eight. And it's all about thus the sages and then something. So they're translated in similar ways, not identical, but similar. But notice that the first four characters in line four are exactly the same as the four characters in line eight. Okay, so now what we're gonna do as usual is that we will tackle the lines one by one, and in some cases, character by character. Here we are looking at the very beginning of chapter 66. We're going to start with actually the chapter title, Jiang Hai. Here's the pinyin for that. In this case, the pinyin is relatively close to the actual pronunciation sounded out by a native speaker. Now you can see in the translation above that the English part starts with rivers and oceans. So that gives you uh, an idea, a good idea, about the literal meaning of these two characters. The first character, rivers, second character, oceans. The significance of that is that the ancients noted that water flowed downhill, so they would always go from rivers into oceans. Uh, now, of course, Geographically, we know that there are times when the flow can be backwards, but that's a temporary situation. Most of the time, rivers are flowing into the oceans. Not only that, but because water flow downhill, small streams will flow also in a downhill direction into larger streams, into small rivers, into large rivers, and then into the ocean. So this is uh, something that the ancients could easily observe. Now, whereas the ancients in other parts of the world would simply settle, would simply uh, pause there and say, okay, well, now I understand how water works. It flows in the down direction. The ancients in, uh, in the ancient China, uh, the sages of ancient China looked at the same situation and then they extended from all of this into a very elaborate metaphor for the Tao of humility and also for what we today call servant leadership. So we'll talk about all of that as we explore. Next, let's take a look at the other significant concept from line one. Bai Gu Wang, here's the opinion for that. Bai Gu Wang, and here's the literal meaning. The first character means hundred. The character in the middle means valleys. And then the last character means king. So you can stitch them together and you'll have hundred valleys king. In reality, it's more like the king of a hundred valleys. And it can also be plural, which is the way we have it in the translation, the kings of a hundred valleys. A hundred in this case, is just another way to say many. So it's about being the king of numerous valleys, many valleys. And as we said, in the last slide, the streams of a valley, just like all streams, all rivers, 
the streams of a valley would flow into the river and then to the ocean. So the valley, uh, the only difference here versus the previous slide is that we're bringing the valleys into it. So valleys are usually um, favorite destinations for the ancients to settle because the surrounding mountains offer protection from the elements. The valley itself can be fertile, can be easy to work the land and produce bountiful crop. So the valley can be life sustaining and there are many valleys, many mountain ranges forming valleys between them and usually there's a river that is flowing through them, collecting from the streams that originated from the surrounding mountains. The ancients noted that when you look at this whole process, smaller streams flowing, gathering into larger streams, larger streams going into a small river and then being gathered together, collected into a larger river, they thought that this process was similar to subjects of a kingdom paying tribute to the ruler. Or you can think of it as smaller kingdoms playing, paying tribute to the larger and more powerful kingdom. Where the large river is playing the role of the powerful kingdom or the powerful ruler. Thus, the river rules the valley and the ocean because the ocean is the destination for many rivers each of which rules the valleys the ocean itself rules numerous valleys many valleys so the rivers of the world they rule many valleys themselves but the ocean is the ultimate now the significance of the rivers and the oceans is in the next word that we have to explore, san xia. So this is what we're going to talk about next time. This is just a quick preview of it. Noting the time right now, I see that we are reaching the end of our meeting time today. So I'm going to make a quick jump to the summaries. And then next time, we're going to pick it up here at line two. Let us summarize what we talked about today. We've only just gotten into it, but already we see this mental image of a river flowing through the valley. So visualization is streams of the valley flowing into rivers, in turn, flowing into the ocean. So this is talking about rulers of the Tao that they needed to take the position that is lower, just like the river is lower than the streams that flow into it, and the ocean is lower than the rivers that feed into it. Rulers of the Tao have to take that lower position to practice the Tao of humility. What this means, and we're gonna talk about this next time, is that they're dedicated to serving the people. When they have that level of dedication, what they mean, what it means is that the people's interests come before the ruler's own. And finally, an important thing is that Rather than to coerce, rather than to force people, command them to do something, the great leader of the Tao would inspire them, would have them come up with a plan of action. The best leader of all, the ultimate leader, is so seamless in that process that the people feel that they did it on their own. Our meeting has come to an end. But the journey continues on. Let us all travel safely so we can meet again. Until next time, may the Dell fill you with peace and happiness.